And two weeks ago, uh, on Sunday, I talked about first things first, um, based on Book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And I want to revisit this passage one more time uh, with a different perspective, with a different angle on that passage. As we know that Jesus talked about how not to worry about your life, not to worry about what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear. Because these are things your Father in heaven already knows, and He will provide your basic needs. But for you to concentrate and focus is to seek His kingdom and His righteousness. Then all these needs shall be added unto you. So how we talked about three T's, time, treasure, and talents that are all gifts from God given to us, but investing all these three T's upon our physical needs, but instead seeking His kingdom and righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto us. And while we seek His kingdom, in the kingdom, any kingdom, not only God's kingdom, there are three scopes. One is there should be ruler, king, and then he's a subject, he's a people, and then the territory. So our king is our eternal father. So before anything else, we should seek his face, and we should dwell with him, and we should walk with him, and focus on worshiping him. And also, there are his people, and largely there are two groups of his people. One is an unsaved group. The other is a saved group. For unsaved people, we should evangelize and share the gospel, and that should be our prime and goal as a Christian. And secondly, the saved group, these people, we should ourselves to be made disciples while we also make other people disciples of Jesus Christ. And then there is a territory even though we realize kingdom of heaven has come to us in Christ Jesus, but it's not yet fully realized, but that will happen when Christ comes back to us, then we will truly enjoy eternal heaven. And in that territory, instead of investing all the things, the material things, into this realm, but to heavenly realm, because when we enter into heaven, not only we are saved and we will enjoy presence of God eternally, but there's rewards waiting for us. And for that, we want to invest our material things, not on this earth, but in the heavenly realm, where there's no rust and no uh, worms eating up our treasures. So while we talked about these, so that's why we want to invest our three T's by seeking His kingdom and His righteousness. But we want to take this passage to different anger. Why? Because Jesus said, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear. And if we further meditate upon this passage, what Jesus has said, we can find the common denominators of what He said. What to eat, what to drink, and what to wear is all about our physical needs. It's all about our physical needs. So what he's saying in different perspective is don't be too consumed and preoccupied about your physical need, meeting your physical need. Because human being, as we understand, is not about only body. When we look at the mirror, myself, it's not only with the physical eyes, with the reflection that I see in my body. It's not just me. There's a soul and there's also spirit. But spirit is more important because our spirit and its own well-being will influence our soul and our body. So instead of seeking your physical needs first, which your father knows, and he's more than ready to provide your basic needs. But be concerned and be 
preoccupied more on your spiritual well-being than the physical well-being. Because your happiness will not be dependent upon how you provide your physical needs. But instead, your spiritual well-being will be directly proportional to your true satisfaction, content, and also your happiness. So let's further expound upon this passage and talk about our spiritual well-being, which is related to our happiness. So let's turn our Bible again to book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 through 34. Let us remind what Jesus said in his Beatitudes. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Verse 34 together. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. As we talked about priority last time, it's very important that we seek first things first. Our life if we mix up priorities, we can waste our time, we can waste our energy, and we can lead unfruitful life. Especially as a Christians, it's very important to recognize what things are high priority and the others are low priority. Because even Jesus said that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And when we look at the life of Jesus here on earth, he understood his role. He understood his own priority. He himself sought after his, God's kingdom and God's righteousness as well. He also understood scope of his ministry and priority in his ministry. He never went outside of the land of Palestine because he was called to minister Israelites, the Jewish people, and of course, while he was making his disciples, he gave them vision and the dream to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. But he himself, for time being, he was limited in his time. He was limited in his own body. So he was focusing on the salvation of the Jewish people and raising the disciples among the 12 disciples. And he also came not to the world to be served. That was not his priority. His priority was to serve other people. And in fact, his greatest priority was not to live and establish his kingdom on this earth, but instead to die on the cross. He came to die. That was his priority. He clearly understood his highest priority. And us, as Christians, we also must understand our highest priority. It's not about seeking our bodily needs, even our soulish needs. Because in our soul, we have intellect, emotion, and will. And many people in this world, without knowing God, they have sought after their physical needs, and they have sought after soulish needs. But we understand physical needs, soulish needs, cannot truly give us 
true satisfaction or happiness. Otherwise, Marilyn Monroe will not kill herself with all that beauty. Those are people who are so rich and physically they may have everything, but they still commit suicide. If intelligence or knowledge give us a true happiness, Hemingway will not kill himself. So we must realize why that physical needs and soulish needs, even knowledge, fame, power, education, cannot give us true contentment. Why? Because of us, we are created in the three components. Just like Apostle Paul said on the verse of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23, he said, And the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are not just the body as a human, but you are comprised with a body, soul, and the spirit. And uh, my desire and my prayer to God is that your spirit and soul and body may be preserved blamelessly until the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that comprisement, we must realize more than our body, more than our soul, our spirit has the highest hierarchy in our infrastructure as a humankind. So our spiritual well-being is much, much more important than our physical well-being or our soulish well-being. But as we heard what Jesus has said, don't worry about what to eat. Don't worry about what to drink. Don't worry about what to wear. The common denominator is don't be preoccupied too much about your physical needs, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. And all these physical needs shall be added unto you because your heavenly father knows what your physical needs are. But be mindful of your spiritual well-being. That will truly give you satisfaction, and happiness. Why is it? Because unlike animals and other creation, we, even though we are created by the dust, but His Spirit was breathed into us because God created us according to His image, and we are spiritual beings as our God is a spirit. So anyone who worships Him should worship Him in spirit, in truth. So in the physical realm, no one has seen God or heard Him. Why? Because our God is a spirit. However, ever since humanity has fallen into sin, we were disconnected, we were separated from God, then all the misery, all the unhappiness, all the suffering came into humankind. Why? Because He's a creator, we are the creation, and we become happiest when we are connected with God and when we commune with Him, when we converse with Him, and when we dwell in His will. And that communication is only done in our spirit, not in our bodily realm. So what Jesus is saying, I believe there's a connotation in different perspective, but instead of trying to pursue to fulfill your physical needs first, but be concerned with your spiritual well-being because that will give you directly your true happiness and satisfaction. Because when we are distanced from God because of our sin, something has happened in our spirit. We were disconnected in our spirit. There is a great void in it. And people try to fill that void with the money, sex, the fame, knowledge, power, whatever it can be. But in the end, still is a void. And one of the most powerful examples is by the life of King Solomon. In the physical realm, in the soulless realm, he had the greatest wisdom. And he possessed so much of physical stuff. But yet, 
at the end, he said, all is a vanity. All is a vanity. But it's about how to fear God and walk with God will give you true contentment. So what Jesus is reminding us is, if you want to be happy, if you are looking for true satisfaction, then you need to be spiritually well-being. Because our God is a spirit. Only God can fulfill the void that is left. And when we accepted Christ as a Savior, we are spiritually born again. Our spirit is revived. So we are reconnected with God. But also at the same time, if we continue to be carnal and be preoccupied with the only physical needs, even though you are reconnected with God, that vanity and void will continually pervade, will be prevalent in your life, and you will not enjoy true satisfaction. So seek God who is spirit and be concerned with your spiritual well-being. So our three T's, time, treasure, and talents should be focused on our spiritual well-being rather than our physical needs. You know, when we think about what to eat, what to wear, and what to, re what to drink, not only these are all our physical needs, there's another common denominator. This is daily needs. So people worry about it daily. And also, on the other hand, because of these are daily needs and physical needs for our survival, we happen to invest a lot of money upon these. One study I read in America, average household spend about $550 per month for food. That average household in America is 2.5 people. But that's a really small, if you think about it. There's husband and wife and 0 0.5 children. <laughs> Be fruitful and multiply, please. <laughs> but in that household, excluding dining out, each household, the average, they spend $550. Now, I heard that when I was working in New York in an import and export company, I heard all the merchandises, the factories they produce, 70% of merchandises are for women. Women invest upon a lot of things on the physical knees, makeups, and shoes as well. And there was another survey for American women, and over 2,000 women were surveyed, and how many pair of shoes they have. Average American women have 20 pairs of shoes, but they only utilize and rotate five pairs of shoes. But the Philippine Imelda Marcus, who was a dictator's wife who was ousted in 1986, when she left the government, they found 1,222 pairs of shoes of hers. If you calculate it, if you wear new shoes each day, it will take three and a half years. But some of the sisters may say, Pastor Shine, that's a wrong calculation because women don't wear the same shoes every day. They change it every day, probably three pairs, then it's only one year. <laughs> but if you consider paying our mortgage and paying our rent for our physical needs, putting a roof upon our head, then a lot of money, greatest chunk of our income is spent on our physical needs. How about if we reverse this and by seeking his kingdom, our God, who is a spirit, and be more concerned in our spiritual well-being. Some years ago in London, London School of Economics, they did an international study and research. And they found out because economy blossoms, people may have a higher level of happiness. But it turned out, 
if any family happened to get their salary twice as much as before, the happiness level they scaled from 0 to 10 only elevated 0.2% when their salary is doubled. But on the other hand, if they find a new healthy relationship, the happiness level went up 0.6 scale. That's a three times higher than you get your salary doubled. What does it, this mean? It really proves we are relational beings and we are spiritual beings, and in that relationship, we find happier in our life. But us, as a Christians, who can have what is the most important, most powerful, most influential relationship we can have? That is with our God. With our God. When we enjoy intimacy with our God in our spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be much, much happier. In fact, we will be happiest if our spirit is well intact with our God and enjoys with His intimacy. Now, having said that, Jesus talked about for your physical needs, you need to eat, you need to drink, and you need to wear. So let's apply this to our spiritual well-being. For our spirit, we need to feed, we need to drink, and we need to wear. And how can we make this implication? You know, once a woman is married to her husband, she will find greater happiness as long as she knows she's being loved by her husband. That's what God declared your desire will be your husband. We were talking during our Israel mission in the morning, having breakfast with a pastor, Igor. Uh, with a, we had a, some single sisters there, and naturally marriage came about as a topic of the uh, uh, conversation. And Pastor Igor said to single sisters, you need to decide because you want to be a successful woman or you want to be a happy woman. You can be a successful woman, but to be a happy woman, you need to get married, be loved by your husband. <laughs> Not my saying, Pastor Igor said. Us, we are the bride of Christ. We are the wives to our groom, Jesus Christ, which means our desire is upon him. So as a bride, we will not be happy unless we I realize that daily of his love and his grace. So that's why that we want to feed our spirit, we want to drink in our spirit, and we want to wear. And let's apply this. First, eating. You know, you may be coming to church for last 30 years. So in the physical age, you may be 40 years old and 50 years old. That doesn't mean your spiritual age is at that stature. You can still be infant in your spirit because you are so concerned with the physical need instead of spiritual needs. And on the other hand, there can be a teenager, but that teenager may be 14 years old, but in his spirit, he may be 40 full-blown adult spiritually. Why? Because he has been feeding his spirit with the truth of God and with the word of God. There's no other way that our spirit will be strengthened and will be well fed and grow continually apart from the word of God. And that's why we continually emphasize meditating God's word and engage into the journey of reading his word with the Bible time and so forth. What God said, Jesus recited when he was attacked by the devil in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. We know this verse very well. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You will not live by feeding your body. But more importantly, we need to live by 
the word feeds our spirit that comes out of the mouth of God. It's not only daily meditation of word, worship is important, come to Friday night worship, re-engage into the prayer, and hearing the voice of God. Those are people who never been to TD, come to 3 SDS. Easy TD number 15. It's barbecue party. That your spirit will be so well fed, and it's a $350 for candidate, I believe. That's worth where for physical needs because you spent $550 for your food each month, your family, I mean. So that's how we feed our spirit with the Word of God. And that's how we can be strengthened. And then secondly, to apply drinking our spirit thirst for His presence and intimacy with Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, our spirit can be so dried and just like a deer pants for the stream of water, and David confessed that, that I also pant, that my spirit, my soul longs for the living water. When Jesus was conversing with a woman who had a five husbands, and then the man she was living with was not even husband, that she thought that continually meeting man and living with another man this man may give her satisfaction. No. She kept changing the man. But the man cannot give her true satisfaction in his, her spirit because man is a physical. So this is what Jesus said in the book of John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Jesus answered, said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, because this woman came to the well to draw the water out. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water spring up into everlasting life. This thirst, the dryness we feel, that's an indication that I long for his intimacy and he's a spirit. And we crave for his presence. We crave for intimacy with him. And looking at my well-being of my spirit. And I need a water. I need a living water. Jesus, I come before you. I crave. I cry out unto you. Restore in me the intimacy with you. Let my cup run over with your living water. Then, thirdly, wearing our clothes. By wearing our clothes that we block shame, because our nakedness is shameful. And by wearing clothes when it's cold, that we put our thicker clothes and so forth. How about our spirit? How do we protect our spirit? When our spirit is broken, when our spirit is damaged, all the circumstances around our life becomes so precious. Daily routine, daily responsibilities become so stressful. Not because physically I'm weak. I had a breakfast. Yet, because my spirit is damaged, that all around my life becomes so heavy and I become depressed. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 14, the writer said, the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. Even though circumstances, even though my life situation, there may be many infirmities when my spirit is alive and strong that I can sustain and I can survive. However, a wounded spirit who can bear. There are multiple passages in the book of Proverbs saying like when your body aches, there's a medicine. But when the spirit aches and spirit is damaged, there's no medicine. However, in Christ Jesus, we do have a Holy Spirit. So how do we manage our spirit? When body gets sick, when we have a cold, we took in, 
medicine. When we're hungry, we feed in. The bodily, the sign is so clear. And we know how to take care of our body. However, oftentimes, Christians, we can be so negligent to take care of our spirit. Because when our spirit is broken and damaged, and we have no strength to get up in the morning, and everything becomes stressful, and we blame the circumstances, and we blame and judge other people, but in fact, the reality is, because my spirit has been broken and damaged, and I have no strength to rejoice and overcome infirmities of our life. There can be many ways that we can protect and guard our spirit to well-being. But one of the things that I myself recognize, and when I counsel our brothers and sisters, and when I witness their life, is one thing when our spirit becomes so vulnerable to enemy's attack is because when we lose thankfulness in our heart. When we do not give thanks in every circumstance, in every situation of our life, we become so vulnerable and we leave a door open for the enemy to attack. And when our spirit is attacked and quenched and oppressed and damaged, then all other physical life circumstances may seem to become worse and worse, even to the point that we get physical illness, but that stemmed from our spiritual brokenness. So how are we doing with a give thanks in everything? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God. No matter what kind of situation, what kind of wrongdoing that I have experienced by other people, how hardship circumstantially that I go through and unexpected events happened against my own desire. What God is saying to us, give thanks in everything because I am in the control. You trust me. You trust my love. And then your spirit will be maintained because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So under any situation that we want to not only continually feed our spirit with the Word of God so that it may grow and it may be strengthened and we may hunger and thirst after His intimacy and His presence while we put clothes of abiding in His Word, especially retaining thankful heart under any circumstance so that my heart does not become damaged or my spirit is broken and everything else becomes so burdensome, so stressful, so heavy laden in our life. You know, while we talk about being spiritual Christian and carnal Christian, throughout the entire scriptures, God teaches us by the examples of men and women Inside of house of God, there are two types of people. One was spiritual. Another one was a corner. One was a seeking God who is a spirit. The other one was a seeking the needs of the body. One good example can be Esau and Jacob. They were born by the same mother. They came from the same womb. But two men were so different. One was a very physical. He was a hunter. He was a mindful of the bodily needs and so forth. And the other one was a younger, maybe a little bit feminine, but he was more spiritual. That he was concerned and he was pursuing after spiritual matters that is related to God. That's why one day, Esau, being hungry physically for his physical needs, he will sell his own birthright with the price of pottage. Perhaps that's why God, before they were born, God said, Isa I hated, and Jacob I loved. Because with his foreknowledge, he may have known 
how these two people will live so differently, one spiritually, the other so carnally. Dear brothers and sisters, I want us to read one passage from 1 Corinthians as we concluded this message. Because as our spirit is engaging with the Holy Spirit, the blessings that God has planned, His will, things that belong to God, is only revealed and recognized in our spirit, not in the physical realm. Here, Apostle Paul said to church in Corinth, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. See here, what God has prepared for those people who love God cannot be seen by eyes nor can be heard with our physical ears. But how can we recognize them? Here it says, but God has revealed them revealed all these blessings, His plan, and things that belong to Him unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. As we continually feed our spirit, with the word of God, where they continually thirst after His intimacy and His presence, as we continually preserve well-being of our spirit, in our spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, as we converse with Him, as we commune with Him, as we dwell and walk in the spirit, the things that belong to God, the blessings God wants to reveal them to us, Recognizing the will of God, recognizing lifelong plan for every one of us is revealed only by the Spirit, not by our eyes, not by our mouth. May we, may we truly be spiritual people. May we obtain the spiritual well-being to enjoy true happiness and contentment in our life. Let us all rise. Some of us may have a broken spirit and damaged the spirit even at this very hour. What could that be? What caused your spirit to be broken and grieved and damaged? Your spirit Holy Spirit can reveal to us even this very own hour to go back where the brokenness happened, where damage has occurred. Can we grab that either event, wrongdoing, mistreatment, betrayal, whatever it can be, can we grab it and give a thanks unto the Lord? Can we at this time thirst after His presence, hunger after His truth, and ask God, God, I have a broken spirit. God, my spirit is damaged. I honestly confess, would you revive my spirit? Would you re-strengthen my spirit? Help me to be mindful of my spiritual well-being more than my physical well-being, God. Help me to invest for the things that are spiritual more than that are physical. Lord, rejuvenate my spirit. Grow my spirit. Help my spirit be so sensitive, so keen to your leading, your unction, your plan, your will. As Jacob was a spiritual, and pursue after it for the things that belong to God. He became ancestor of the nation of Israel. Lord, as we pursue you, pursue your presence, and wanting to be spiritual 
in deep things that are revealed by the Holy Spirit and will be recognized by our spirit. Lord, revive and strengthen our spirit. Help us to prioritize on the spiritual matters more than physical matters. Let's call on the name of Jesus three times and pray. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.